Hey guys, it's Miki Asmar here, and today I'm going to be reading in a Wise Me Hajime ex listener. This one is titled Cleaning Detentions, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. It wasn't your fault that you were stuck in the situation. Why were you stuck with cuts and bruises from glass and cleaning duty for a month with your crush and friend, Wise Me? It was all Oikawa Toru's fault. He had set up this entire situation at 7 30 a.m. because he knew that you liked his best friend. Needless to say, you were stressed and super pissed off at the bimbo of a setter. You had been pushed out of the you had been pushed into the window by Oikawa, which made your body smash into it, and Wise Me had been pushed on top of you, making it seem like the two of you had fallen into it on accident. But it was your fault, and the witnesses were a few people on the volleyball team who were also in on this scheme. They had framed it as the two of you being in a fight and one of the and one had pushed the other. Then stumbling and falling into the glass, which had made the window break. He threw the towel at Oikawa's face in frustration while he was talking, while he was walking down the hallway. The cloth flew and landed on his face when he was talking to one of his fangirls. The girl sent a glare towards you and tried to help Oikawa, but you went up to him and snatched a towel, sticking your tongue out at the girl and smacking Oikawa Toru straight in the face. Trashikawa Yuho, how dare you do this to me? Hajime and I are injured and have detention during lunch. Oh, and have detention during lunch, Tamas. You just got rid of your ace for a whole month and most of practice. He hurt his hands. I hope you're happy. He snarled. He stood there speechless. He had never seen you so pissed in his entire life. You were acting like a wise me. The sweet, funny, forgiving, and loving first name last name was snarling and yelling at him. He thought you'd be appreciative, but you were about to strangle him. Hey, ugly ass, don't talk to Oikawa like that. Shut it, Pipsqueak. I'm not in the mood for your pick me bullshit. How dare you? I said, shut it. You sent a nasty, a nasty glare and a middle finger towards the pair before storming off to the area that you were supposed to be cleaning. A wise me had been in the infirmary because he had gotten a cut super bad on his hand. Not that you hadn't, but you had managed to clean yourself up to where. Or, you, were managed, you managed to clean and bandage yourself where you could because you, had, because you were taking extra classes in first aid. The rest of your wounds were handled by the nurse because they were too severe. So, it took longer for Wise Me to get treated. During that time, the two of you had been given an option of cleaning, de of cleaning detentions or being suspended from sports for a month. The two of you chose cleaning suspensions or dis detentions. But it still cost you your time after school for activities. You were on the softball team, and you didn't have time for all this crap. You threw your towel down on the floor, running out of the unused club room to the infirmary. You slammed the door open and saw a wise me mid changing. He was shirtless. Oh my god. What the hell were you seeing? Your face turned bright red, and you immediately became very shy. You shut the door behind you, checking to see if anyone had heard. I, um, I was just trying to figure out if you were ready to leave after lunch. You rubbed the back of your neck and avoided eye contact at all costs. The boy was a little bit pink, but he replied, Uh, yeah, I'm ready, but please knock next time, first name. He shook off his nervousness and continued, trying to button up his shirt. I want to pummel shitty Ko in the face for what he did. We were just walking, damn it. Why won't he believe us? Because everyone else on the volleyball team is an asshole, you stated while picking up his bag for him. You noticed him struggling with the buttons. When a wise me had fallen, he inst instinctively put his hands in front of him to stop himself from hitting the ground too hard. But, but that cost his hands. You set your pride aside and placed his bag down, walking over to him and taking over. The boy was stubborn and kept trying as he got his other buttons, but his hand hurt a lot from the shattered glass. Shit, he muttered under his breath. Tiny shards were, or tiny shards were washed out of his cuts on, the, on his fingers, but it still hurt a lot. He grabbed his own hands, stopping him from opening the wound even more. He gazed into your eyes, slight stars in them as you placed them by his sides continuing to button his shirt for him and focusing on only buttoning his shirt. His blush grew even more intense as he finished buttoning his shirt, leaving even more room for the relaxed way he wore his uniform. 
He saw his tie strewn on the counter, and he picked it up, putting it around his neck and beginning to tie it. He sat there, flustered from what you were doing to him. You tried, or you finished tying it, and... Or, sorry, you finished tying it the way you like to tie ties, since you did it for your little sister's uniform. And it wasn't the traditional way to tie a tie. You delicately finished tying the difficult, older ridge knot that you had learned. Though it, f it fit your sister's uniform better, you forgot how to tie a regular knot. There, I'm sure you can handle the blazer by yourself now. There's some gloves, and apparently for a week we have to clean out the closed down club rooms during lunch. And I don't really want to do this alone. He sighed out, handing the boy the rubber some rubber gloves. This is all Oikawa's fault. He set this up. Awazumi had a surprised look on his face. I figured he did, but how did you know he did? You nodded. Or, but you... Oh, sorry. I figured he did, but you know he did? You nodded, grabbing his bag and beginning to walk him back to one of the third-year classrooms. He has this... Or he has blackmail on both of us. I don't know what he has for you, though. It's not important. Uh, what are you hiding anyways? He inquired. I'm trustworthy, but it can't be that bad first name. Can you tell me? Um, it's a secret for now, but I'll tell you sometime soon. Because Shitty Cowboy won't stop testing me until I tell you something. You responded, turning to look at the ground beside you, avoiding eye contact from the spiky haired boy. He nodded, continuing to walk to one of the or continuing to walk with you to one of the unused club rooms. That specific area was empty. No one really around that area, so it was quiet. I gotta go get some more cleaning stuff for you, but I'll be back in a few minutes, he told him, setting down his bag and le leaving to go to this, leaving to go to the storage closet on the first floor. Awazumi glanced around the room, seeing the other cleaning supplies on the ground. His room, or the room was for the geology club, and an abandoned club at this point. There wasn't enough members to run it, so the supplies were all in boxes around the room. He had seen your bag in the corner. He knew that you were in this club before, along with softball, so it probably hurt knowing you'd have to clean everything out. Awazumi spotted, er, spotted a small box in the corner amidst all the other boxes. It was small, light blue, and it had a name on it. He couldn't make out what the name was from here, so he went and picked it up. He examined the box before realizing it was your box. He figured it was some a box of rocks or something, so we opened it, not expecting to see over 15 different love letters stacked up neatly. Awazimi remembered that in all of your friendship, you had never told him of a crush. A blush started forming on his face. Was it him? So this was your secret, but who were these letters addressed to? He was so oblivious that he didn't even notice his crush liked him back. Awazumi was going to examine it more, but he heard your footsteps, so he quickly put the box back and sat on the floor where the cleaning supplies were. I'm back, Iwa. Sorry for taking so long again, and sorry that you have to do this. And also sorry that Oikawa dragged you into our mess. He rubbed the back of your neck, handing him a rag. He took it and shook his head. Thanks for his name, but it's really Oikawa's fault. That asshole should be doing other things instead of messing with us. He reassured, voice turning sour as he mentioned Oikawa. He laughed out, grabbing your rag and starting to clean the windows. You're completely right. He's, he is an asshole. Now, let's go to work. He sent a sweet smile towards him. The anger had lessened to the point where your regular, your regular personality came back, but you were still rightfully mad at the dumb setter. A wise and me stared, or started at the window next to you. The both of you are beginning with the front, with the front of the club room windows. You worked your way in the opposite direction of a wise and me, wiping down everything in the direction that you were going, until you both met up at the windows at the other side, sitting there and watching it. There was a particularly dirty spot that you wanted to get, but you couldn't reach it because it hurt to extend your arms all the way and because you had landed on your back when you had got cut up. You were trying your best, but it hurt a lot. You hissed out, accidentally opening the wound right next to your armpit. The wise of me worriedly looked over at you, 
putting his rag down and coming to check on you. I don't know. Did you get another room, first name? Shh, be careful. Sheesh. Why is me scolded? Moving your arm down. Can I look at it? You nodded at him, removing one sleeve off of your shirt, wincing as you felt the pain, or wincing in pain as you felt the wound being stretched. He gently took off his gloves, moving your shirt to try to see the wound. It was red and more irritated than it was before, but pretty normal, and he let out a sigh of relief. Is it bad? You asked, grinning your neck to see his face. He shook his head and moved your shirt back onto your arm. He let out a sigh of relief, bringing your arm through the sleeve and readjusting. Th thank you, Hajime. It's not a problem, first name. I didn't think anything would be wrong, so please don't push yourself. If you need help, just ask me. A Wizumi smiled at you, picking up his rag and got the spot, or in getting the spot that you were trying to get. You glanced at the ground, a blush covering your face, and you shyly nodded. The two of you began, or continued to clean the windows. You grabbed his hand with your own, not letting go, which caught the attention of a Wizumi. He turned his head he turned his head to yours and looked into your eyes. First name? Hajime, I you sat your rag down, running your running your fingers through your hair as you let go of his hand and continued. Never mind, it's it's nothing. A Wizumi watched as you bit your lip, watching or washing from the desk or washing the desk in front of you. He ignored it for a while, continuing to clean the room. Wazumi was watching you with your troubled aura, until an alarm went off in your bag, reminding you to eat quickly before you had to get off to class. He put all of your cleaning supplies in one area of the club room, sitting on the floor and taking your bento out of your bag, eating as much as you could during that time. Wazumi grabbed out an onigiri, or grabbed an onigiri out of his bento, eating it quickly. You put your bento into your bag. While he, had taken, well, he took a long drink from his water bottle, a love letter caught his eye when you were putting everything in your bag. His eyes widened. He almost spit out his water. But instead, he went through, or but instead, he went through his nose. A wise me cringe from the awful feeling of water flowing throughout his nose. It dripped onto the floor, covering his face in gross water. Oh my god, are you okay? He rummaged through your bag grabbing your handkerchief and coming up to him, holding the handkerchief up to his face and wiping off the water. A blush splattered across his face as he gently wiped off the rest of the water from it. He blush, or you saw the blush on his face and realized just how awkward the action you just did was. Sorry. <laughs> um, you glanced at the ground, placing your hand by your side, clutching the handkerchief tightly. Uh, sorry, that was a... Uh, Kind of awkward. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't mind. I was just a little flustered that a cute person was, like yourself, was stabbing my face. He admitted, shuffling his feet and glancing at the ground. Your face burned a bright red. Seam puffing out of your ears. Did you, um, just tell me that you like me? You sputtered out, fiddling with your fingers. He turned away, face ablaze red. It didn't, or, it didn't respond. That, oh, and that told you everything you needed to know. You tried regain, regaining your composure, but it was useless. You walked to your bag, seeing the letter visible from where you were. You realized that was why the water came out of his nose. You bent down and grabbed the letter, walking back and handing it to the boy shakily. Silence, it's some dots, so just silence. He took your hand in his own, rubbing them gently in acceptance. A wise me leaned down into your face, a blush covering or a blush of red <laughs> a blush of hot red covering your face. The both of you fluttered your eyes shut, lips centimeters apart. Ha ha ha, it worked. You were turned first name sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. First comes up. <laughs> a wise me cut Oikawa off with a hard smack against the skull, and he wind out in pain. Shirikawa, shut it. Iwa-chan, you're so mean. You slap Oikawa hard across the face. I'm reporting you to the guidance counselor. <laughs> I'm reporting what you did to the guidance counselor, asshole. 
he spat, still pissed at what he had done. His eyes widened in shock. He would be, or he would be in so much trouble for this. You picked up your, or you picked up your own and Wazumi's bag. You grabbed Wazumi's hand and Oikawa by the wrist. Hajime, text the volleyball club that we're meeting in the guidance counselor, or that we're meeting in the guidance office. I don't really care if you guys get an entire week of crap to do. Me and Hajime are going out on dates every night of the week while you guys are in punishment. Time skip for scenario change. You talked with the guidance counselor, explaining the situation while sending glares at the other volleyball members. The counselor listened and asked the team, which they ended up admitting that they lied about the whole incident to get you and Hajime together. The members that were involved ended up getting three weeks of after-school detention cleanings, suspended from sports for a week, and a month of a month of lunch cleanings, and they had to pay back the school for the class. While you and Hajime were deeply apologized to for the misconception. So, volleyball boys, was it worth this to do it to your friends? Or was it worth this to mess with your friends? The counselor asked. Absolutely. <laughs> they yelled in unison, and you face palmed along with Hajime and the counselor. You people are insufferable, Hajime muttered. Me and first name are being excused for everything, or for being gone. What? Are me and first name being excused for, for being gone during class and her injuries? Yeah, oh, that's the wrong point. <laughs> yes, I'll inform your teachers. You're relatively good students, right? You should be able to catch up with everyone else's stuff if you look for notes. You were dismissed. I still need to talk more to these idiots, so have a good day. The counselor responded, letting the both of you go. You bowed and left with the Wajime, or with Hajime, closing the door behind you. The two of you walked in awkward silence for a little bit, avoiding eye contact furiously. He eventually intertwined his fingers with your own, pulling you closer to him. Hajime put his head on your shoulder, happy to finally have the guts to tell you in some way. I'm glad you're mine, Hajime. Please, never leave me. You sighed out, continuing to walk the boy to your classroom. I won't, first name. I won't. <laughs> that was so cute. Oh my god, that was adorable. That was adorable. I know I did a little bit of a misreading, but I mean, what else is new here, guys? I mean, it's my channel after all. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell to get notified every single time I post a video. And also like the video because it does something for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you really like this, make sure you go check out the um link in the description. Hey, yeah, don't get that, of course. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe. It